just know that compassion can feel it as long as me the hope
want us to give God the glory? Come and lift up your heart, just lift up your hands and begin to bless the name of the Lord. Tell him, Lord, you are great and greatly to be praised. Tell him, Lord, you reign forever. You reign in majesty. You reign in beauty. You reign in glory. Can we take that song again together? Say, great are you, Lord, great.
Join the host of heaven and sing it. 
us to the the King of glory in the house. He's worthy of all praise. He's is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Just lift up your voices and begin to exalt the one whose kingdom is forever. His kingdom is forevermore. Lift up your voices, lift up your voices, lift up your voices. Let him hear you this morning from the depths of your heart. Tell him that he's worthy to receive the glory. Tell him that he's worthy to receive the honor. Jesus, you are worthy. Jesus, you are worthy. rise to him, let it rise to him. You are here to give him what is due to him. This is something he does not share with any man. Do not withhold it back. Do not withhold it back. Just lift up your hands with your eyes closed and exalt him. Give him the worship that is due to him and him alone. Of your lips rise, but most importantly, let it come from the heart of worship. Oh Jesus, be enthroned here.
standing as we take our hymn.
Oh, 
Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, he yielded up the ghost. <clears throat> and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twelve from the top to the bottom. Jesus Christ cried again with a loud voice. He yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twine from the top to the bottom. When the curtain was turned from the top to the bottom, it parted one on this side, one on the other side. So the people could see what is in the Holy of Holies. Because until then, it was only the high priests not even the priests, the high priests who then as high priests, people like Aaron and Co. They were the only people that were allowed, that God allowed to enter into his presence in the Holy of Holies. And when you enter there, you will see God in his glory. That's where the Ark of the Covenant is. So it was meant for some people in the Old Testament, not for everybody. What Jesus Christ did was to come and pay the price for man's sin that had prevented him to have access to the source of life and the sustainer of life. Man was cut off. Life begins when you get inside that place. If you have not got in there, you don't have life. You don't know what you are doing. You can be pursuing anything you want to pursue in this life. You can be the president. You can be the, the world president. You can be the president of the whole world, ruling the whole world, but you don't have access there. You are so blind. You don't know what you are doing. 
you are cut off from the essence of life. Father, we thank you. We honor you today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for coming. We don't deserve all this. It's because of Jesus Christ, your Son. That's why we are here today. That's why we can call you Abba, Father. Thank you because of who you are. Dependable God you are. You are reliable. Very intentional and purposeful in everything that you do. That is why you dwell in the light unto which no man can see nor approach. That's why you are God that cannot lie. There is no shadow of turning with you. Excellent, gracious, merciful, full of loving kindness. Even the psalmist said that your loving kindness is better than this life that we live. What an amazing father you are. We thank you. Holy Spirit of our Father, we ask you today, One thing, one thing, that at the end of our meeting with you today, every man and woman will leave that door with full assurance of faith in you. Knowing that you are God. Knowing that you are real knowing that you are no, not a figment of our imagination, is beyond imagination, that you are awesome and glorious. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It's only you that can do this. And all this and more we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Matthew chapter 13, verse 44. And again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, the which when a man had found, he hide it, and for joy thereof, goeth and selleth all that he had, and buyeth that field. 45. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man, businessman, seeking goodly pills. Who, when he had found one peer of great price, he did what this other person did. He went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind, which when it was fully, when it was full, they drew to the shore or to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but cast the bad away. These three parables of the kingdom of heaven. The first one talks about salvation 
when we met Christ. The treasure that was hid in the field, out there in the field, you met Christ. The second one was having met Christ. He reveals himself to you. It is a hunger to know him, so he reveals himself. That is second. The third one talks about all of us that are gathered here, there are good and bad and ugly here. There are good people here, there are bad people here, there are ugly people here in this place. So what happens is that we all sit, we hear the word of God. Some choose it, some drop it. Some are just here for the sake of being here. Different reasons why people are here this morning. Different reasons. If you are doubting me, when we share the grace in the fellowship, drop your phone on the chair and go out. Five minutes later, you come back and see whether you will see see that phone. It's to show you that there are good, there are bad, and they are ugly. They are all in the house of God. Drop your wallet with some money inside. Pretend that you forget it and go home after service, then come back. You will see it again. You have the good, the bad, and the ugly. They are here. They are here, 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 here in this church this morning. They are sitting down here. They are looking at me, hearing me. In the presence of God, in the glorious presence of God, they will see the way. Let me show you what is the ultimate journey for those of them who call upon the Lord from a pure heart. So there are those of them who call upon God from a pure heart. There are those who call upon him from an impure heart. You see, you decide what you want to be. You know, we keep saying it. If you know the kind of measure that awaits each and every one of you, including me, at the close of time, if you know the measure, if you know what is standing before you at the close of time, one day you are going to cease from breathing. One day you will die. Two ways. Either God comes, rapture us, all we go. Or he calls you home. You die. For it has appointed unto man to die once. And after that, you are going to face judgment. You will face it. Buhari, he will face it. The former president, the present president, he will face it. The, uh, whether you are an atheist, the person who doesn't believe that God is existed, you will face it. It is a destiny that every man will face. It is when you stand face to face, then it will now, by that time, it is late. It is only this time, within this time that you are living in this world, hmm, that you have all the time to believe God, know God for yourself, reject Him, do whatever you want to do. But the, the knowledge of it is available at your disposal. So you do whatever you want to do. At the close of the age, you stand. You are going to answer questions. At that time, there is nothing like mercy 
you see this mercy, it will be withdrawn. You see this grace, you won't find it again. You're going to stand before God. It's just like somebody who is in an exam hall. They give you a question that you don't understand. Then, you want to go and consult your textbook or your notebook. You know, in those days, when we go for exam, when it's time for exam, you carry your notebook. You'll be carrying your notebook to the exam hall, be reading it while you are going. And then before the exam, maybe 20 minutes or 30 minutes to the exam, you go at one corner, be flipping through your note and be looking at it and all of that. And the moment it is 9 o'clock for the exam to start, you know what you do? You drop that your notebook by the side of the door of the class. Is it not? Or the hall. And then you move in. And then the first question you read, you didn't understand it. Ah, you remember that you were about to read it and all of that at that time. Hmm? Then you will now say, excuse me. You want to go out. Will they allow you? Will you be allowed? Why? 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 It is too late. You can't go out. You can't touch that book. That is how it is on that day. Lord, give me a second chance. Lord, I repent. Lord, I am sorry. No. Is it going to happen? It will happen. That judgment say, Deny God, oh. Don't deny God, oh. Whatever you do, that is it. That day, it will happen. That is why Paul said, therefore, knowing the terror of God. There are certain soft words from God's word that is the very first thing that must be installed inside of you at the very first beginning of your Christian journey. There is the first thing that must be installed. It is called a fundamental basic doctrines of Christ. That software must be installed inside of you. And installed in such a way that you cannot, you know, something like um, is it play store? I'll be store play. Which one they call it? You can't remove it from before. That's how this must be installed. If you don't install it and operate it, you are at risk of eternal damnation. I'm telling you the truth. I don't care who you are. I don't care how many years you have been born again. I don't care who, how, what the title that you have or you don't have. It doesn't matter who you are. God is not in respect of any person. You see, you have seen great men, men of God and all of that. You have seen them fall on their faces. You see the kind of things that are going on in the body of Christ today. Do you know the reason why? Because this software was not installed. It's not there. You think it is there. It is not there. And that is how a lot of us are running. Without that software. These are the things that will instill the fear of God inside of a man. It will make you, before you do anything, before you run, before you talk, before you act, before you react, that software will pop up. It controls you. Paul said the love of God constrains us. There are things you can do. There are places you can go. There are things you cannot say. 
There's a kind of life you cannot live. Knowing the terror of God. The problem is that today we have we have all sorts in the church. Pastors and prophets and apostles and uh, great apostles and uh, apostolic this one, apostolic the other one, prophetic this one and all of that. We have all sorts. And then you have the congregation. You have all sorts going on. Different types. Different human beings. However, like I said before, this book, Manoa, is meant to produce only one kind of human being. One, they are not two. And they all look alike. You will not be able to distinguish them. The product of this book, what it produces, you will not be able to distinguish them. There is a um, Mrs. Edda's kids. Three of them, the triplets. I don't bother because I've tried several times. I've tried. I now look at this one, look at her face, look at her, say, what's your name? She will tell me. I now look, 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 finish. I now go to the second one. I say, what is your name? They tell me. I now look, 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 look. When I go to the third one, I ask. I now look, 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 look. I said, okay. Next time. I will be able to identify. So when next I, I will see them again. One day I called the mom, the mother. I said, "Do you do you recognize them? The one that is?" He said, "Yes." <laughs> With all this my effort over this, they look alike. The book this thing produces. It produces one kind of person. When you see the way they dress, when you see the way they talk, when you see the way they, they behave, their lifestyle, their values, they are the same. Our problem is, the problem is, see, the problem that we have in the body, we are so, we are so carefree, we are so careless. That's the reason. If I ask you now, the fundamental basic doctrines and what they are and what are they meant to be in you. Because these are the very basic things that you must know with the way you know your name is John. The way you know your name is this or that. You must know it in your fingertips. It must have become you rooted and grounded in it. This is what is going to make that difference. This is what is going to ensure that, that your journey to the innermost court where you meet him with him is guaranteed and you remain truthful and faithful. If you don't have those softwares, the resurrection of the dead, eternal judgment. Baptisms. We leave it. Okay. Let's start from. So, the journey that God is taking you is a place where God wants to bring you. Can somebody come? God wants to take your hand like this. Hmm? This person, God, now is the Holy Spirit. This is where the Father is. Is where the Father is. Is with Jesus. What, what he wants to do in all of this, he wants to take your hand. And 
take you all the way to where Jesus Christ is. And then Jesus is the one that introduces you to the Father. And you see with the Father, you live, you stay here with him. You become one with him. You romance with him. His glory, his power, everything. You become one with him. This is where he's taking you. Where you become God. He said the ultimate. Give me Romans chapter 8, verse 29. Romans 8, 29. He said, for whom he did for new, or for no, he also did predestinate to be one conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. 30. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them also he was justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. This is to bring you to glory. Give me Hebrew chapter 2 verse 10. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things to bring many sons unto where? To glory. This is the, the last bus stop. This is where God is. This everything that he's doing is to bring you to this point. Where you will share in his glory. When you share in his glory, you become like him. It's a journey that he's taking you. If you are not aware, because a lot of people are born again, you are, we are born again, we don't even know the beginning and the end. We don't even know the job. We don't know, we don't just understand. We think that being born again or being a Christian is to come to church. That's why the day you drag yourself to church, you come. The day you don't come, fine. The day you find you have other things that are important, you want to do, your auntie or your friend and all of that is doing party or whatever and all of that. You know because you go. Then you be, you think that is what church is. It's a problem we have in the body of Christ. That curtain that was torn into two and two is for everybody now to have access. But how many people are ready? How many people even know that there is something like that? So all that we have known about being born again, being a Christian, coming to church, is just for God to meet your need, give you miracle, give you breakthrough, give you this, give you that, in this life. That is not the, the reason. And as long as you keep on focusing, on, you will never get here, which is the ultimate that God wants. And you will never get here, both in eternity, you won't get to heaven. You won't meet him. So at the end of the day, with all that you have achieved and all of that here, it will begin and end here. You are going nowhere. This is what we have been thwarted in the church from the pulpit. We are telling cock and bull stories. Storytellers. That's what we have on the pulpit. Storytellers. Telling people about your experiences and all of that and how you did you and the other. But it has nothing to do with bringing people to this place. That is the reason why you come to church. You see that. You drop your wallet. Drop your wallet. Why the worship is going on, you will see it. I told you I was in the church, in the church, and I was lost in the spirit. I was worshiping God and all of that because they just like they drop envelopes. So I, me, when I come, I have two type of offering. I put one, the other side, I put the other one. So I have the two envelopes. I put money inside. So while I was worshiping, I dropped the thing on the ground in front of me. Lifting my hand and praising God. Worshiping God and doing all that. You are laughing. Okay. Worshiping God and all of that. When it is time for us to sit down, I don't sit down. 
I started looking for my envelope that I dropped in the job. I couldn't find it. You won't accuse anybody now. You know, there is a way you, sometimes you will begin to ask yourself, did I actually put money inside the envelope or not? Because it will, it will be so strange to you. The money you brought, you brought that money, counted it, opened the envelope, put it and keep it here. You will stand up and wait. When you finish, the thing disappears. You will be doubting yourself. Did I put money here? Did I or did I not? The church. Many are coming to church. They don't know. We think we, some are coming. They dress, they dress and come to show off. They are dressing. They think that is what church is. On Sunday, you look for the, the one you are going to wear and all of that. And then for those who have all without, which car do I drive in now and all that? How do I pose? How do I do? These are mundane. And you won't know that you already you are already rotting and smelling and stinking. Many people don't have the slightest knowledge that this journey is, that they're making a journey to meet with God face to face to glory. It is only when you know, understand this and you focus every other thing about your life begin to adjust. As long as you don't have this understanding, you can, you, you can even fast you can fast for 30 years and 30 days or whatever. When you finish fast, you don't know where you are going to. You will just break down on the road. Forget it and move on again. We are just fasting now and praying. Our people are just crying. Hey, hey, we, we say, how, how many days today? Today is Sunday. So after Sunday, it's remaining three days. It's remaining three days. So that, so that I will have my life back. Can you see? So that I can have my life back. That life you are going back, you are going back to damnation. That old, that life you are living is a faulty life that you are coming. God wants to bring you out. And you say, it's only three days so we can go back. The reason is because we don't know. We, we, are going, we don't know the meaning of Christianity. We don't know. I'm not just talking about congregation. I'm talking about pastors. We pastors and prophets and apostles. We see the Christianity as prophesy. You prophesy. You see vision. You prophesy. You prophesy for people and all of that. And you tell them so and so what. You think that is what the Christianity is about? It is not. If you want to know what it is, you know. If you don't want to get up, go and join what whoever you want to join. Continue with what we are doing. At the end of the journey, you are going to stand before him. You are going to answer questions. You like it or you don't like it. You believe it, you don't believe it. It doesn't matter. A day is going to come, you are going to answer that question. Even my voice, you are hearing, you are going to hear it that day. Because if you know that this is where you are going, eh? everything about you even the choice of places you go, even the choice of your friends, the people you draw close to, the kind of person that you go with, they can, even the people that you associate yourself with. will matter to you. Can't come and be joining issues with you because you are my friend, because you help me, because you do whatever, because you, you help me to do what? buy food and give me money and buy a car for me, that is your whatever. You are not my friend. My friend. What did I say? <laughs> Don't mind me. <laughs> my friend is the one that helps me to get there. Jesus said to Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. Because you are 
disturbing me and hindering me from getting to. And he said to Judas, you know what he said to Judas? My friend. Why? Because Judas must do what he needs to do so that Jesus will get to where he needs to get to. Peter, get deep behind me. Satan, Judas, my friend. So that you know who your friend is. Your friend is the one that gives you accommodation. The one that buys your car. The one that buys you food. The one that helps you get a job. The one that helps you get a contract. The one that helps you when you are sick. The one that helps you when you didn't have anything. That's your friend, is he not? Is he not who you call your friend? You are looking at me, you don't want to answer. That's what you call your friend. That's your enemy. Your own, your genuine friend is the one that brings you where God is. If anybody doesn't do that, he's not your friend. He's going to lead you to destruction. Hard truth. Hard. Because you have a lot of them that are so close to you. What we try to give you, I'm going to explain so that you see the reason why some of the things we say here, some of the things we teach here, some of the things we say here, I will show you the reason why you feel so bad. You try to fight it. You become angry inside of you. I will tell you the reason why. See how it starts. See the journey to get to that point. See how it starts. First of all, Jesus said, no man can come to me Except what? God draws him. If God does not draw you, you can come. For those of you who are here this morning, it is God that draws you here. You may be here for the first time or the second time and all of that. However you find yourself here, it is God himself that draws you. To this place. And he's, there are two ways he does it. One is that he uses somebody to tell you to come to church. Come to this place. It's God that is using them to speak to you to bring you here. Number two. You hear about people say, I was just passing and something say, come inside. Have you heard such a thing before? God pulls you. You come in. No man comes to Jesus. I'm just giving you the process. And then when you come, you know, for the parable of the hidden treasure, so when you come in here, the next thing that you are going to do, that God is going to do, is that he will make you hear the gospel of your salvation. And I keep saying it. Sometimes you gather, you do miracles, you have programs, you have whatever, and then you climb the pulpit and you preach. And any message you preach that doesn't have gospel inside of it, you are not going to do anything good to the people. You know what that gospel is? That Jesus Christ came down from heaven. He's a son of God. God brought him here. And he lived and died. He was crucified. Not only that he was crucified on the cross, he died on that cross. And then he was buried. They brought him down and 
open the grave and put him inside the grave and covered him. On the third day, he rose from the dead. This statement has so much implication. You explain it to them. The reason why he died is because of your sin. Because of your iniquity. Because of the evil that you have done. You and I have done. And God is angry at you. And you are going to face the wrath of God. So all of this, Jesus Christ came and went and did all that. He paid the price that you owe. We are indebted to him. Because we are indebted. All the soul that sin it must surely do what? Die. Die is outside of the presence of God. You won't see God. In you, you won't be in any of God's create anything that God created, and you won't be in his system. So he's going to bundle you and put you inside hell. And with punishment, with fullness of fire. Forever and ever and ever. That is where every man is going to end up. If you don't follow this part of Jesus Christ. And then why you are hearing that? The next thing that happens is that John 69 comes up. The convicting power of the Holy Spirit. It will convict you first of sin. Convict you of righteousness. Of the bad things and all of that that you've been doing. It will convict you of sin. Convict you of, ju of judgment. Convict you of righteousness. And then when that conviction comes, you will break down. You will see your state. You will see your, your, the helpless state that you find yourself. And then you cry out to God. What should I do, Lord? Men and brethren, what shall we do? It's always a question of what to do. That's the next thing that will, that will happen. When Peter preached, they cried out and said, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Convicting power of the Holy Spirit. Nicodemus, after hearing Jesus Christ, he went to meet him in the night. He said, What shall we do? Sure, what shall I do? How can a man be born again? The next thing is that you believe, repent, and then eternal life imparts it to your spirit. You receive Christ. Now you are born again. And when that happens, when that change occurs, the burden of sin Sin is a burden. Sin is like somebody carrying this whole building. This building is not even heavy. Sin is, sin is, is overbearing. Sin is heavy. It's very uncomfortable. All ye that suffer and are heavy laden as sin. When you meet with Christ and this life is given to you, that burden is lifted. You become light. You become like pepper. That is the burden of sin and all of that lifts you. You become very light. You become happy. Ah, ah, ah. Thank God. Do you know that there are many people this is the beginning, you know. This is the reason why, if it has not happened to you, if Jesus Christ has not met you this way, and this eternal life has not been given, and your heart, you say, I will take away, I will take away the stony heart. The heart is stone. How big, how, how heavy is stone? Very heavy. It's pulling you down. You, know, you carry body in your life. No matter who you are. If you like, you can be the governor. You can be the president. You can be the richest man on earth. You have a body in a heavy lady. It's inside of a man. Nothing in this life can change it. Nothing in this life can solve that problem. You can buy as many cars as possible to elevate the body. 
not going anywhere. He can buy the whole estate in Nigeria and all Africa and the whole world. The, the, more, the, the more you buy, the more the burden increases. The more you buy, the more the burden. The more the heavy. That's what a lot of us are, we are craving. Craving to get, craving to achieve. Achievement, 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 success, success, success. You name yourself, your, 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 your name is, uh, you change your name to success. You change your name to miracle. You change your name to favor. You change your name to blessing, good luck, rich man. When you finish, eh? when you finish, the more you, you see all those things, the more the body over is, is heavy. You've not seen anything yet. If your attention and your mind and your drive is not to come here, you will you you will continue no matter how many years you fast and pray. No matter how many people lay hands on you. You may not like what I'm telling you, but that is the truth and nothing but the truth. So people carry burden. That's why Jesus said, in the world you have what? Burden. In me, what do you have? Why peace? Because that burden will live. live there. All ye that are labor and are heavy laden, come. I will give you. He said, learn of me. Because I'm meek. I'm lowly. My burden is light. My yoke is easy. But we don't want it. We want the success that the world offers. We want the breakthrough that the world offers. We want the miracle that the world offers. We want the wealth that the world offers. We want everything. You can name your business. The name of my business is Melchizedek Enterprises Nigeria Limited, PLC. Yeah, so somebody said Melchizedek. Melchizedek Enterprise. When you finish, you see all those things. It's not in detail. If you are desired, because this is where God is taking you to this place. It's only when you meet him that all these resources that is in him, the Bible Paul calls it in Ephesians 3, he calls it the unsearchable riches of Christ. So, when you have not gotten there, you say the, now, let's move to the next stage. You have now received this Jesus Christ your body is lifted. The yoke is broken. You are a free man. You are light. You've received Christ. Hmm? After that you are born again, you have received Jesus Christ. There is another one that you need to do. Give me Isaiah 45 verse 15. Isaiah 45, 15. What does he say? Verily thou art who that does what? O God of who? The Savior. What is he saying? <laughs> God hides himself. You must discover him. And it is your job, your duty to go. Fine. If you don't go, you will continue to remain. God will continue to remain elusive to you. No matter who you are, you must go and find him. He hides himself.
If you don't want to find him, that's your business. You can live, oh, you can live as a child, grow up 70 years, 80 years, 90 years, 100 year old man, 100 year old woman. You can't find him. You have not found him. You can't find yourself here. That is why the Bible says, it is not the will of God that any man should, but what? But that all shall be saved. And do what? And do what? Come to the knowledge of what? You can be saved, but you have not come to the knowledge of the truth. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You have not come to know Christ. Jesus Christ has not been revealed to you because he hides himself. So what he's saying is that you can't be born again, but Jesus Christ is not yet done what revealed in you. In Acts of, Acts of Apostles 17, the Bible talks about Paul when he came to Athens. He met them with an inscription. That says what? An unknown. So they worship the God that they do not know. An unknown God. So you can be worshiping God, but you don't know the God that you worship. Because that God has not been revealed to you. And as long as that revelation of Jesus Christ has not been given to you, You will see, believing your life under the sun, everything about your life, your concentration, your drive, your everything will still be of the world. The key, you now when you tell people the things of the world, come out from the things of the world, don't do this one, don't do that, you are just wasting your time because the revelation has not done on them. So you see, most of the time, the prayer we make is wrong. It's wrong praying. It's not working. It's not working because it's wrong. We are praying it amiss. You can't tell somebody, for example, you can't tell, when you say, when Jesus said in Luke chapter 14, 26, he said, Anyone that cometh to me must first of all deny himself, deny your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, if you don't deny everything that you have and all. You can't do that. If you have not done the second one, you can't, because this is the third stage. You can't tell somebody to deny and all of that when he has not had a revelation. Why will I deny? Who are you? He doesn't know who God is and you're telling him to deny, deny himself. It's by revelation until it is revealed. Even to preach Jesus, you can't preach it. Paul said, when God who separated me from my mother's womb revealed Christ in me that I may do what? Preach him. You can't preach him. You can't represent him. You compromise. You make choices that are not in his favor. You are not inclined to him because you don't know him yet. Because if you have a revelation of him, every other thing, you will pursue him. You will give up everything. Just like Paul said. Because of the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ, I have suffered the loss of all. You can't do that. You can't tell somebody to suffer. Or the loss of all things. Give up everything. Do all the If the person has not come to the third stage, you can't do that. Everything that you are saying and praying and telling him to do, you are wasting your time. There is a process, my brothers and sisters, in the things of God. That's why there is precept. It must be upon precept. Line must be upon line. You can't take a primary student, primary school student, and we are telling him about the law of inertia, how it works and operates, the dynamics of uh, aerodynamics and all of somebody that is in primary school. 
you are talking gibberish. You bring practicals and all of that, you will use it and you will think it is a toy. But the thing is that he hasn't gone through this. So we have a lot of, so what we are struggling in the body of Christ today, we're not even talking, you, you won't even hear anywhere where they tell you deny yourself, do this and all of that, so that the glory of God, you can reach it. And Nobody is telling you that. What they are telling you is that you need to fast in order to break the, the ancient demons that are disturbing your family, that are running in your family, that makes it not possible for anybody to rise up, to do whatever and all of that. You spend all your time fasting and praying to break all those But if your desire, if you know where the journey is, and your desire is to get here, all those things, the chains will be falling off. When you get to this, the chain will fall off on his own. We are doing as if to say God is struggling with Satan, that Satan is so powerful that God cannot. I just don't get it. So we stay in the... When we come... Until, until you move from that first, you can call it the outer court. You can call it the 30-fold Christian. Then you move from that 30-fold Christian to a 60-fold. And that 60-fold is where you now begin to have that revelation. When Jesus Christ asks, now look at Matthew chapter 16, verse 15 or 16. Jesus was asking them a question. Verse 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? He asked them a question. Who do they say that this Son of Man that I am? Guess what they say? Verse 14. And they say, Some say that you are who? And some say that you are Elijah. And some say that you are Jeremiah. <laughs> and some say that you are one of the... Why are they saying that? Why? They don't know him. And he was in their midst. Then Jesus now asked Peter, You, who do you say that the Son of Man is? What did Peter say? Why can't you give us this thing? You have no reason on planet Earth to be doing what you are doing to us. It's unfair. Matthew 16. In verse 16, what did Peter say? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. What did Jesus say in verse 17? He said what? Flesh and blood. Do what? So there is a revelation of who Christ is. That revelation does not come because you went to school. You can be an educated illiterate when it comes to spiritual matters. If you have not known Christ, you are an illiterate. Because there is only one thing to know. The one and the most important person to know. And the one and the most important thing to know in this whole life that you are living. And Jesus said in John 17, 3, he said, this is life. To know God and to know Jesus Christ. whom thou art. If you have not known him, you don't know nothing. You are illiterate. You can be the best in the Harvard. You, can, you must have gone to Harvard. Yeah? And become the best, you are still an illiterate, illiterate to the highest order. 
Because the one that created you, created Havar, created the whole world and all of that, said this is the meaning of life. To know God and to know Jesus Christ. And you have not known him. So who do you know? What do you know? So you are interested in who you know. Uh, there is somebody, there's somebody that knows somebody that knows him. So let me call him so that they will connect you and link you. Ah, this person, man, you know John. John is connect, well connected. He knows a lot of people. And, that, and so he knows how to clear ground. He knows how to sow seed in order to, you know, he understands all those whatever. If you talk about, there is one person that my wife, we used to have in Abuja in those days. There is no person that you mention in this war. The next thing, while you are talking about that person, the guy bring, he will bring out his phone. He said, let me call this person. I'm sure he will know this person that will know this person. He will now call this and he put a call. Uh, hey, please, uh, it's me. So how are you now? Um, can you connect me to so so so? He will now connect him. And then that one will connect him. That one will connect him. So anytime we had issues and all of that, his name is Chris. We just call him. Please, there is a problem. Oh. He said, what is the problem? Which area? So he knows somebody that will know this person, that will know this person, that will know this person. Who do you know? Do you know him? That's why Paul said that I may know him. That's why Jesus said that the most important thing is to know God. So go back to Matthew 16, 16. Is it 17 now? Matthew 17, he said, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for what flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Jesus Christ must be revealed. If Jesus Christ is revealed to you, your values will change. The way you think will change. Your mindset will change. Your choice will change. The kind of places you go will change. The kind of people that company that you keep will change. The kind of music you listen to will change. The kind of books you read will change. The kind of food you eat will change. The kind of drinks you take, everything will change. Why it has not changed is because he has not been revealed. Let us tell ourselves the truth. It is on this particular stage that majority of the Christians, and when you come to this particular stage, there are different strata, different levels of uh, knowledge and revelation of Jesus Christ and all of Some are the ankle level. Some are the knee level. Some are the waist level. And that. But the ultimate is to be immersed in him so that the glory will carry you. That is what we meet at the Third stage. If you are not walking towards this, you don't have any, you don't have, you are aimless, you are visionless. Even when we go out now and you say you want to win a soul, you win soul. When you win soul, you, you see, when you understand what is going you, the soul that you win is for you to take it from that outer court to the inner court and to go and meet Christ. When, you, when he meets Jesus Christ, you have done your job. Until he meets him. That's why he said, you didn't choose me, I chose you, and I ordained you that you might go and bear fruit, and that your fruit may do what? Remain. When he said, whatsoever So I'm not going to be asking for miracle money. Like some of you are, you are looking at your body now, whether there is gold or your body, so that you go and scrape it and go and sell. That 
Thank God for your real revelations. I stand by this book. See this book? I stand by it. If God is going to punish me and send me to hell for believing, for standing, let him do so. Because he finished this one. All that, a lot of people are praying now is that you are wishing that when you go home now, you open your whatever. Let me put, let me put 2,000 naira. When I come back now, let me see the miracle and all. That's what you are believing God. And I'm believing God for a miracle of multiplication. So you now go back again. You'll be doing like this. It is still 2,000 naira. Forever it will remain 2,000. Don't go and do what he tells you to do. You didn't choose me, I chose you. I ordained you, equipped you, empowered you. Fill you with my spirit and with my power and all of that, that you may go and bear fruit. And wait. The fruit he's talking about is the precious seed of the earth. He said the husband man is waiting for the precious seed. The precious fruit of the earth. The souls of men. When you win them, you begin the process of discipleship. To bring them to the moment you tr- introduce them to Christ, just go and see that. Open your mouth, open your mouth, say whatever he is you need. If it doesn't happen, don't believe there is God. And he said, You didn't choose me, you have not chosen me, but I did what? I've chosen you. And did what? What does it mean to ordain? What does it mean to ordain? You don't know. Go and check it from your Bible. Go do concordance. Equip. Equipment. He equip you with everything that you need. He has equipped you. So that you can do what? Go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. What is going to cause your fruit to remain is when you introduce him to the Father. And then what did he say? Whatsoever you shall ask. So, you know what? I don't want to be I don't want to be joining the prayer line. I want to be in the power line where I will be the one distributing. I want to be the one that uh, you are looking for whatever. How much do you need? I will give it to you. I won't be following you everywhere you go. Because if I don't follow you now, I'm going to offend you. You are going to do whatever because my life depends on you. I won't do that. He's the one. He said, look unto Jesus Christ as the author and finisher. So keep looking at him. Follow him. Paul said, follow me as I follow Jesus Christ. Follow Christ. Everything about your life will straighten up. No matter what it is. No matter the kind of you. No matter the kind of body. No matter the kind of problem you have in life. Our major problem, the reason why we see where we are going around the circle is because our attention has not been focused on it. And so, and why our attention is because that Jesus Christ has not been revealed. And the reason why he has not been revealed is because we are not interested in the revelation. We're interested in what we can get. All our prayer now, you know the value of a man by the content of his prayer. You know the value of a man by the content of his prayers. You know the value of Paul by the content of his prayer. Go and see all the Pauline prayers in the Bible. Every one of them from the beginning to the end. At the end, he said, we being rich, I mean, we being poor, but making many rich. They have made great men successful. You see, no matter what we do, if you like, you can be sleeping. Satan doesn't want you to hear this. Sleep. When they share the grace in the fellowship, now your eyes pop open. Or you can start sleeping now, you will sleep again. 
Then she the grace of fellowship. It was needed. It's too soon. Once grace is shared, boom, you can say here till it is in the evening. We don't know what is attacking us. We don't know what the problem. The message that is going to revolutionize your life, he doesn't want you to hear it. He will tell you, he will press on your bladder, your urinary bladder, bladder. You will press it and press it. He said, oh, yeah, get up, get up, get up. Because you are going to hear this one and your life is going to change. And I don't want your life to change. So get up now. I will press this and you will press it. You will just do like this. He said, okay, 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 okay. You will go. And while you are going now, that is when you need to hear what you need to hear. And if what you are hearing, if what you, that thing that you are supposed to hear is still being said, and then after... Urinate. He said, please walk, 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 walk down. Go down to the door there and look at them and see whether they are looking at you before you come in. He said, then you walk down, go through the door and you stay there. He said, look at yourself now. How are you? How did this your dress? How do you look at yourself in the mirror? Use the door, the glass door. Use it and look at yourself. You won't know who is behind it. It's Satan. Matthew 16, 17. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. 17 says... And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bajona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but by my Father, the one that is in heaven. He has revealed Christ. It's by revelation. When Jesus is revealed to you, hmm? Have you heard where people say it was King Agrippa that said to Paul, you are out of your mind. Hmm? You are outside of your mind. You can't be operating with the mind of man. The kind of things you do. Is it not madness for you to leave your house? You say you are coming to church. It's every time you are praying, you are reading Bible. Is it not out of your mind that somebody you know that you can kill and destroy and all of that, you're doing all this thing to you and you keep quiet? It's when you have a revelation of Jesus Christ, your life now will not be the normal life until people will tell you that you are out of your mind because you are following Christ and all of that. That revelation has not yet come. That revelation has not come. When your wife will stay and you know, give it to you, toy on your face. And you just smile as a husband. And he said, the reason why you are slapping is it not because you are so beautiful. You will think you what I want to do to you. <laughs> is it possible? Is it possible? Human being, human is only somebody that is out of his mind that can do that. The mind of Christ. The reason why you would do that is because you have had a revelation of Jesus. You have had a revelation of the person of Jesus Christ. When you know him, when he reveals himself to you, even when your husband abuses you, you won't abuse him back. Even when your wife insults you, you won't keep malice. The revelation of Jesus, there's something that he does, is a spirit. There's something that he does in a man.
you can be a prophet. What did I say? And you don't know him. Hello. You can be a prophet prophesying. You don't know him like Isaiah. Isaiah. Until he met him. He said, I have been an unclean man dwelling in the midst of unclean people. Woe to me. You can be a prophet. You can be an apostle. And when you look at the so-called apostles and prophets, look at their lives. They don't, the kind of things they say. You see the level of arrogance and pride and all of that that go with them and the kind of affluence and all of that. You know that this is not Christ-like. It's not like Christ. If you have met him, his presence, his aura, and all of that enters you. It's not in the preaching, no. It's not in the preaching. You can preach for all I care, and things will happen, and all of that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about somebody. First John chapter 1, verse 1, please. That which was from the beginning, we have heard, and we have seen. With what? which we have looked upon. Our hands have done what? The word Habrene <laughs> When this happens, eh? when this happens, you'll be a changed man. They will tell you that your governor is looking for you. And then you tell you that the head of your department in the church is looking for you. Hmm? Which one do you answer? No. If you lie, you go to hell. Your governor is calling you. And at the same time, Raj is calling you at the same time. Who will you answer? Yeah? God. Two of us. Compare compare governor and the Raj. But the man that have met Christ, when you see him. <laughs> when you see, when you met, I don't mean, you know, there are two ways you meet Christ. First Samuel chapter 3, 21. One way you meet Christ. And the Lord appeared again to, appeared again where? In Shiloh. For the Lord himself, for the Lord did what? To who? Where? How? with the word of God. This is the one that lasts. This is the one that is more authentic than that one that you want to go to see in heaven. Didn't Peter say it? We heard that excellent voice from glory. This is my beloved son with whom I am. Hear ye him. He said, but there is uh, the one that is more genuine and more authentic. You can hold on to it. The word revealed. Until this thing, listen, eh? until this book, even the Bible, even the word, the word of God is coded, you see. You know, you know when Jesus went to heaven, when, I mean, John the Bible, the beloved, when he was in heaven, when he received all those, he said, there was a cry in heaven. Who is worthy to come and, res- and take the scroll from the hand of God Almighty? He said there was nobody worthy. And then he cried. As he was crying, the angel patted him uh, on the back and said, Hold on. The lion of the tribe of Judah 
has prevailed. Don't worry. So he went up and reached out and took that scroll from the hand of God. And the whole people, everybody bowed. And then the Bible said, he began to open it. Is a seal. Where's your Bible? There is a seal. You see this thing? It is seal. That's why Jesus said to you, it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. It's a mystery. It's sealed. It's coded. You can't see it. You can read it and see the letter. And the letter kills. The spirit behind it, you don't have it. The one that gives life. That's why somebody can be reading this Bible, read it and read it for years. You can't see any change in your life. You're still where you are. Nothing has happened. Jesus said, the word that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Until that seal is removed, you can see everything about his revelation. Jesus said in Revelation 3.18, he said, I cancel thee to buy from me gold tried in fire. That thou mayest be rich, and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed, and that thy, the shame of thy nakedness do not do what, and anoint thy eyes with so that what will happen? If you are not interested in the glory of the Father, to see with the Father, to meet with the Father. If you are not interested, all these things are here is are just wasting your time. You are even wasting your time here. You can as well get up and go and not come to church again. That's why we do the things you do. The, the zeal of the Father's heart has not consumed you. The reason why that zeal has not consumed you is because you have not met with him. He has not revealed himself to you. That's why you can afford on a Sunday morning of all day. You find yourself doing something else. You find yourself any other place. To, for coming into to worship the king of it because you don't give me give me John for 20. Our father worship in this mountain, and and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. 21. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me that the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor at Jerusalem worship the Father. 22. You worship, you know not what. You do what? In other words, you are worshiping who you do not know. That is what a lot of us are doing. And when you are worshiping him, you don't have a revelation of him. No life. No life. The life-changing power of God is not coming out of it. His religion, his tradition. You blow hot air, blow hot air, and all of that. When you finish, you go. Scatter the whole place. Break all the chairs. Men, brothers and sisters, this thing is by revelation. I don't want to, because, so, when you move this, when you leave this stage and move to the next stage, the next stage is the stage where you win Christ, where you gain Christ. The next stage, just like Paul said in Philippians 3, 8, 7 and 8, he said, I have suffered the loss of all things. In, but one thing, so, one thing we are gained to me, those I count loss for who? For Christ. Yea, doubtless I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them but done, that I may do what? Hey, don't tell somebody to give up his uh, Isaac, give up uh, Abraham, give up uh, whatever, all those things. Before you can get to this stage, you must have a revelation of Jesus. That's what Abraham did. Abraham met with God. He knew God was real. 
there is something, you know, there is a way they say it in Hebrew. Ebubago, that is the glory of a lion. Is what keeps him and preserves him. When you come to God, the glory, that thing radiates from him. He enters you. He rubs off on you. So the ability to behave like God and live like God and do like God and all of that is imparted. So that is why Paul was able to do what? Why he was able to say this was because of what he said in Galatians 1, 15. Until Christ was revealed in him. Now. So, and this is Ebano. You know, there's a place they call Ebano in the island. This is Ebano. That's where we are. That's where the journey. That's the final bus stop. When you get to this point, you've given up everything. Luke chapter 14, verse 26. Look at what he says. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sister, yea, his own life also, he cannot do what? Be my disciple. For you to get to this point. If you don't have a revelation of Jesus Christ, it can't happen. You can't put God before your mother. You can't put God before your mother, your father. You can't put God before your sister. You can't put God before any other person. Your mother, your brother, your brother, your sister, your whatever becomes number one. And God, Jesus must take the preeminence. So why we are not able to, that is why he said, if you love father, mother, and brother, and sister, and all of that because of me, over me, he said, you are not worthy. So how can my mother, for example, now is dying in the village, and God is telling me to come here and stand here and preach. Which one do I choose? I will not even give it. I won't even think twice. He said to him, leave the dead to do what? To bury their dead. Come, follow me. So go ahead and abuse Jesus Christ because I'm not saying anything different from what he, is, what he said that I'm reading out. But what I'm saying is that before you can get to that point, what you should be praying and crying out to God for is what? God that I may know you. You are my father. I am your son. Just like a father knows the son. And the son should know the father. Who could not? Because God hides himself. He wants to be discovered. And finally, nobody can find him for you. Nobody. All of you that is here. Every single person here, nobody can find God for you. He's by you. If you like, be your maybe your daughter or your son or that is 12 years old or whatever. He must find God by himself. You are, what you are going to help him do is to introduce him on the path that leads to life. But as for you, individual, you must find him by yourself. That's why he said the just shall live by his own faith. How may I now find him? How may I know him? I want to know him. I want to find God. I want Jesus Christ to make himself real in my life. How can that happen? At least say, let me, let me know, know him the more the pastor has known him. The extent to which he has. Let me even get to that. So we go to Luke chapter 24, verse 13. Luke 24, 13. And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score followers. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and the reason Jesus himself drew near and went with them, but their eyes were holding that they should not do what? See, you can go through the scriptures everywhere. It is by revelation. Somebody withholds him. 
something is withholding him from you knowing him. Pray that that thing be lifted. Pray that access be granted. Is your father. You must know your father. God derives pleasure. Put, you come back to this Luke 24, 17. Give me Proverbs 25, 2. Give me Proverbs 20. Then you come back to Luke. It is the glory of God to do what? But the... It's an honor to search it out. God who conceals himself. He hides it. The treasure is hidden. You must find it. And when you find it, it's an honor. That's why the Bible says, when that man found that treasure, he hid it out of joy, because of joy. There is honor and glory and all of that that goes with it. It's a rare treasure. Finding Christ is finding everything. Yes, I'm praying that one day God is going to take me. Jesus is going to take me. Go to heaven. Show me heaven. Show me everything. I can't wait to see that happen. But whether he comes to take me there or not, yeah? <laughs> the one that he has revealed to me in his word will do me. Can this one do you more than enough? And I have told you the ultimate is not just because Moses knew God. After knowing God, he still did not enter the promised land. So go back to Luke 24. And their eyes were withholding that they should know him. Pray this prayer, Pauline prayer, Philippians 3.10. They don't have to go there. Pray that I may know him. Pray Ephesians 3, 18, that I may know the love of God that passeth all knowledge. Pray Ephesians 1, 17, 18, that I may know that grant me a revelation in the knowledge of him. Pray it. A revelation in the knowledge of him. Revelation in the knowledge of him. Revelation in the knowledge of him. These are called the Pauline prayers. That's why when you pray, when you make prayers, these are the things. These are the things. You open it. Look at it. Let us pray. Ask God to grant you the spirit of wisdom. Ask him to give you a revelation in the knowledge of him. That you may know him. Ask him to reveal Jesus Christ is in, you, in you. Christ in me is a hope of glory. That Christ in me, I don't know him. Do you know that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost? That the God that created heaven and earth is living inside of you. The Bible said that in Ephesians chapter 3, 18, he said that we may know the exceeding greatness of his power that is at work to us who believe. That same power that he demonstrated in Christ when he raised him from the dead is inside of you. Do you know what it means? If you know, you won't, you won't be walking like this anymore. You won't be talking like this. The kind of things you say, the way you carry yourself, the kind of confidence and boldness with which you speak will be altered. They may be able to comprehend with all sin what? Ephesians 1.18 this is another time. When you read Pauline prayer, eh? when you go there, you will be, your brain will scatter. You see, your brain, you can't control yourself again. Something will be happening. Life. Everything about you. This is why Paul said, I knew a man, whether in the body, out of the body. 13 years ago, I'm not aware. Whether he's in the body or not. But that man was caught up in the third heaven. And so things. It's a prayer. It's a kind of prayer. 
let's leave all this thing that we talk in the name of praying and all. Kenny Hagin said he will go to church. He will lock up the door, open the Bible, we kneel down. He said he had prayed this prayer more than a thousand times. Open my eyes. He said he prayed it for about six months. All of a sudden, it simply happened. You'll be reading this Bible, you wonder. <laughs> Some, one day, somebody sent me. He said, Pastor, please. Which Bible do you read? He said, which version of the Bible? I say it's King James Version. He said, no, he said, which the Bible, I mean the version, the type of, tell me the name so that I can go to the market. I say it's King James, this one. When you get to that point, things open. You know that there is another, that's why Kumuye calls it deeper life. That's why 700 Club calls it another life. The one we are used to is a natural one. It's on the surface. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know the hope to which he has called you. To know the riches of the glory of his inheritance in self. That God has inherited you. There is only one inheritance God has. He doesn't have to. He didn't inherit angels. He didn't inherit the cherubims and the seraphim. He didn't inherit any other. That is actually the reason why Satan is not happy. One of the reasons why he is not happy is because he created man in his image and his likeness. He saw it. He preferred man to any of those angels. He didn't choose the angels. When Jesus came, he didn't come in the name in the nature of angels. He came in the nature. He had it because man is the most precious. That's what provoked, put that anger and wickedness and all of that in the heart of Satan over man. He wants to destroy. He hates man. This reason is because God so love man. What is it that you have found in man that you have crowned him with honor and glory? Satan saw it. His heart caught. That's why he's not happy with you. That's why he doesn't like you. That's why he hates you. Being enlightened that you may know what the hope of his calling is, the riches of his glorious inheritance. God has, you are God's inheritor. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people called out from all. You are God's inheritance. You are God's apple eyes. You know why? Your prayer, you are still praying, torturing in your prayer. If you pray, you are not even sure of whether you are not even know whether God is praying, hearing or not hearing. You are doubting, full of doubt and all of that. Because you don't know that you are Jesus speaking. That like a mother cares for her children. So God cares about. You need knowledge of it. That knowledge is revealed. Until it's revealed, you will see go there and be crying. Cry, cry unto God. Cry out to God. Cry out. Do you tell your daughter to cry out? Eh? Mama, do you tell your daughter to cry out to you? you know, these are the things we borrow from cry out. Cry, cry. <laughs> God, I'm a cry in the church. You cry. <laughs> God will tell one of these angels, go and remove this guy away from him. <laughs> Take him away out of here. I don't want cowards. God has not given us the spirit of timidity. Let us come to the presence of God with boldness. Come with what? Let us come with what? Let us come with what? Let us come with crying before him. I am Jesus speaking. 
I don't know who you are. You can call yourself anything. I'm Jesus the King. I'm Prince. I told you to call my name is Prince. I didn't just change Prince for whatever because he said, I am a royal priesthood. That's where I got it from. I am. Case closed. You don't have to believe it. You don't have to like it. That's your business. I don't have any business with you. This is me and God. Why is Jesus, why is John called the beloved? Did Jesus call him the beloved? Eh? Who called him the beloved? <laughs> and everybody is not calling him the beloved. I am the beloved of God. I'm his beginning. I'm God's inheritance. I'm God's own property. He has bought me. He has inherited me. Now go further. He said, they know the riches of his glorious, of, uh, his glorious inheritance in the sense. Verse 19. And what is what? The exceeding greatness of his power. To who? Who do what? How? According to the working of his mighty. Which power? Which he did what? He wrote in Christ. When he did what? Where is that power? Where is that power? It's in Christ. You, you don't know. That's what you are reading now. That's what we are reading. That you may know the exceeding greatness of his power that is at work to us who believe. That same power he demonstrated in Christ when he raised him is called the resurrection power. That's why Paul was praying that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. That I may know that power inside of me. Revelation is what unleashes it out. You are a dynamite. But you don't know. You see, you are a dynamite. You are more than a dynamite, but you don't know. The revelation. When it comes, what you say, what you do, how you do it, changes. You look at issues and circumstances, you will be crying. The way you talk to God, the way you pray, when you, when you see people pray, Father, He will shout because God is, he has a hearing problem. He has to shout it. Father! You are the one that created heaven and earth, in case you don't know. Remember. You go going round and round and round. Just one simple prayer. Jesus said, Father, I thank you because you always hear me. And because I do the things that are pleasing in your sight. Simple. Get the job done. The ears of the eyes of God are watching over the righteous, and the ears are open unto their prayers. Simple prayer. Revelation. 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 I have shown you several. I can open this scripture and show you everything about God is real. God hide himself. Everything about Peter, who do men say that am I? He said thou art Christ. He said because flesh and blood can reveal it. Jesus Christ cannot be revealed by human reasoning. One plus one is what to do. Go to all the school that you know to go to in this world for all I care. You will still not know him. You are still illiterate. It's by the Spirit of God. And when God reveals Himself to you, and I've shown you how He can reveal, He can reveal Himself. But the most authentic way God reveals Himself is through you. You can have other encounters in visions and in dreams and all of that. Fine. You know, I've not cleaned up what I wanted to clean up. That is the final thing I want to say. In Luke chapter 24, I was reading verse, is it 16 or 18? I can't remember. Go there. 
but their eyes were holding that they should not know him. Verse 17. And he said unto them, What manner of communication are these that you have one to another as you walk? And the one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering, said unto him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem, this man? What is wrong with you? Has thou not known that the things which are come to pass here in the... You are in this um, Nazareth. You didn't hear all this in that. What kind of human being are you? Who was he talking to? And he said unto them, What thing? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, <laughs> which was a prophet mighty indeed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. Who were they, who, who were they talking about? Where is Jesus? <laughs> they were even abusing him. Are you blind? What kind of human being? In this Nazareth, this Jerusalem, this city. So all these things that are happening, you are not aware. What kind of human being are you? I beg, John. Verse 21. Yeah, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were which were there early in the morning. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. We, will, we trusted that he was the one that is going to redeem Israel, save us from the tyranny of this menace called APC. I thought they were going to deliver us from this hand of these wicked people because they are evil. Because what we are seeing today didn't start today. It has been there. I'm not only APC, I'm a PDP or all of those people. Nobody ever has the interest of you at heart. It's what goes to them. But we trusted that it had been which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this today is the third day since these things we are done. Yeah, and certain women also of our company made us astonished all the more. They even terrified us again because they went to the grave and discovered that the man was no more in the grave. Who we are not talking about? Where is Jesus? He was with them. They were giving the man information about Jesus. Yeah, and the certain women of our company made us astonished, which we are earlier at the sepulchre. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels. We said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre and found it, even so, as the women had said, but him, the son of, that is when they said it to John. John now ran with Peter after him. They went to the sepulchre and only to find out that he was not there indeed. And they met an angel that told them that the man is gone, he's risen. They were, this story we are telling to who? Jesus Christ. And Jesus was with them. And they knew him. And watch. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that prophets have spoken. Slow to heart. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Remember, is that glory that he's taking you to? And beginning at Moses and the prophet, he expounded unto them all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. And they drew near unto village whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further, but they constrained him. Go back to 28. I want you to open your Bible, write, make this underline that two statement. And they drew nigh unto the village whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. He wanted to continue. He knew everything that was in their heart. He knew everything from the beginning to the end. He pretended he wanted to know whether they desire him or not. If you don't desire him, he will not come. O ye that taste, come to the waters. If any man tastes, it is your taste that pulls him to your direction. If you don't have a longing for him in your soul, 
you won't see him, he won't come. And they drew nigh unto the village whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. What, how did their eyes open? Eh? They did what? And he gave them. And they ate. And the eyes opened. Let me ask you a question. Have you been taking communion? Yeah? You don't want to answer me because you know where I'm going to. Have you been taking communion? So what happened to your eyes? What happened? You know why it has not opened yet? Should I tell you? Religion. Religion. You see, sometimes you just carry it out too. And then sometimes you see children. There, if you have children, be careful of this is actually where I wanted to throw some light on this. I'm going to spend time with this thing. There are a couple of things that we do for that revelation to come. Number one is that you have to desire. If you don't long and desire it, the end result is to bring you to glory. If that is not your desire, it will not happen. Number two, Pray that I may know him. Pray to reveal Jesus Christ in you. Pray that he may anoint my eyes with eyes salve so that I can see him. All this prayer that I, all this thing, pray, 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 is one prayer point, not three prayer points. Is praying for revelation. The revelation knowledge of Jesus Christ. It is going to make a whole lot of difference in your life. And their eyes were open and they knew him and his disappearance. When you come to this communion table, the reason is that number one is ignorance. Number two, you remember what we were told about how to keep the glory of God. One thing that will drive God's glory from us, like we had last week. You remember what it is? Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Familiar. Say it again. How do you say it in Yoruba? Because some people are not hearing it well. How do you say it in Yoruba? Or Arifi. The reason is because of Arifi. Amoju and Arifi combine all of them. That's the reason why. Familiarity. Familiarity. You familiar. You get used to God. So you treat it with contempt. The riches and the resources and the blessings and benefit that are loaded in this thing, you will not you will not assess it because it is what you revere, what you respect, is what you attract. Every blessed day, from now onwards, what I'm telling you is by revelation. It is what was revealed to me. God is teaching me. God is instructing me. That is what I'm telling you. But it's not going to happen to everybody because not everybody is going to do it. 530 people or thereabout were told to go and wait at the upper room. Only 120 waited. So even as I'm saying, I don't expect all of you to do it. Some of you are going to go back to your, continue your life. But those who obey God are the ones that are going to see the difference. Get communion every blessed day. Break bread. Take that communion. Eat it. Drink it. Go out. Ask God to reveal Jesus Christ in you. Ask him to anoint your eyes with eyes so that you may 
the sea. Take your communion. Keep doing it. Let your heart and your hunger be on God that you want to know him. One month later, it will happen like a movie. You don't need anybody to tell. People are the ones that will tell you. They will be telling you what has happened. You are burning. I see fire. Everything about you. The kind of desire, the kind of passion, the kind of the result that I'm seeing with anything you touch is and then it blows fire. It opens up. Your home becomes chariots of angels surrounding your vicinity and all that. Angels will come and make their abode in your home. You've not... When, when they, I'm going to take time, I will explain. And I will show you from the Bible. You know, many of times we read this in our, yeah, the eyes are open. In Jesus' name, just take it. I will open it. God, open my eyes. Oh. Open my eyes. Oh. Open my eyes. Oh. Amen. You eat it and you walk away. <laughs> you know, they happen like that. <laughs> you do it with reverence. Amen. And we stand to our feet. And then let's bless the name of the Lord. Let's thank God for the entrance of his word. He very light. He brings light. And that light is a lamp unto my feet. He helps me on day-to-day living. He's a lamp unto my feet. The feet where I was, so I know where to put my feet or to step it to. And is a light unto my path. It shows me my, my destiny. It shows me the way I should go. It shows me the plan of God for my life and all of that. Opens up the mysteries. That's what the word of God does. That is what he has come to do this morning. Revelation. Knowledge of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for the entrance of your word like you said is... He gives it light. He makes the simple wise. We pray today. Bring us out of darkness, out of obscurity. You say we are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill. We can no longer afford to be in obscurity, Lord. You are our Father, our God. We are your children. You are, we are your inheritance. Jesus is our inheritance. We want to have one-on-one with you, Lord. Open up to us. The mysteries of the kingdom reveal Jesus Christ, the greatest of all mysteries. He's living inside of all that we may know him just like you did in the life of your son, Paul, so that we may be able to preach him. When we reveal Christ, we can preach him with boldness, with confidence, with every ounce of power and authority. This is our prayer. And I thank you because you heard our prayer this morning. Thank you, Lord, because what we believe you for is that by the end of the day, nobody will leave this place the same as he came. May this word be written in the heart of every man and woman with the finger of the Holy Ghost. Not in our old heart, but in a flesh heart, engraved in our heart by you, sealed that from today will no longer be the hearers of the world, but also the doers. In the name of Jesus. And I declare today that you shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers. You will bring forth your fruits in due season. Your leaves will not wither. Anything you do, it will prosper. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I say you will prosper in everything of life in the name of Jesus. There shall be no area of your life that will be infertile. There shall be no area of your life that will be unproductive. May light shine in every department of your life. In your soul, in your spirit, in your body. Let them radiate and be indeed like that city. That is set on a hill. In the name that is above all names. We establish the counsel of God in your life today. 
We establish the order of God in your life today. We establish the mandate of God in your life today. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father. You are lifted up and you remain lifted. You will not come down anymore. As the scripture had declared, you are a good man. The just, like the Bible says. And your step, it shines bright and brighter and brighter until the perfect day. The perfect day is the day of Jesus Christ. He's going to come and take you. And when he comes, he will find you blameless, without spot, without wrinkles, without blemish. All to the glory of the Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Glory be to your name. Glory be to your name. Glory be to your name. Say, I am blessed. Say, I am blessed. Say, I am blessed. In Jesus' name. Say, I am Jesus speaking. Say, I am the prince. Say, I am the princess. Say, my prince or princess is not only in Oak House Church here. It's as I drive out, as I walk out, as I enter my car, or enter transport, as I am on the road, I am a prince, I'm a princess, as I'm inside the car, I am a prince and princess. As I get home, I am still a prince and I'm a princess. As I go to work, I am a prince. I'm a princess. Anywhere I go, anywhere I am, this is who I am. This is what I am. This is what God has made me. No one can take it from me. I am the genuine prince. Any other prince is fake. Is counterfeit. Your prince is forever. I am a royal priesthood. A peculiar man. A chosen man. In a chosen generation. Let's do a baby dedication of a child dedication of the family of Mr. Kingsley Asi. I hope I got it correct. Okay. What a marvelous God. What a marvelous God. He has done marvelous things for me. What a marvelous God. What a marvelous. He's still doing marvelous things for me. Hallelujah. What a marvelous God. He has done marvelous things for me. What a marvelous God. What a marvelous. He's still doing marvelous things for me. He, the things that are impossible, the things that money cannot buy, they are the things that He has done for me. Oh, what my father cannot do, what my mother cannot do, He has done it again and again. Hallelujah. What a marvelous God. He has done marvelous things for me. Hey, what a marvelous God. What a marvelous. He's still doing marvelous things for me. Father, to you.
song forevermore. Is it Chi 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 Chimamanda? Chimamanda. Okay, Chima, my God, no go for. God, no the four person hand. God, no go for your hand. Hmm? Your God, no go for. You go stand for ground. Come rain, come shine. After the rain, after the storm, after the wind, when they don't finish, you will be the last man standing. You will be the last woman standing. You will grow in the knowledge of God. This revelation thing we are talking about, you will know God personally, early in your life. You will be a voice in your generation. You will speak the word of God and men and women will come to your rising and to the brightness of your rising in the name of Jesus Christ. You will run. You will not grow weary. You will mount up with wings as you go. You will run, you will overtake and recover everything. You will be a source of joy to your parents, to your family, to your generation in the name of Jesus. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Let this word be rooted and written in your soul, in your spirit. When you grow up, God will bring it to your remembrance that you are today ordained to be a voice in your generation. Many tears will be wiped away because of you. The hand of God will be on you. You will fulfill purpose because you will walk in the ways of God. You will be established. You will be an arrow. A weapon in the hand of God, his workmanship created to bring joy and peace to humanity. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Glory be to your name. And I pray that even the parents of God, that everything that they need in order to raise this child and bring him or her up in the admonition of you, put her in a place where you will have a freedom to relate with her. May all those wisdom and grace be released upon them in the name of Jesus. Father, you preserve them in the name of Jesus. When they see this child in a couple of years to go, they will turn back and say thank you because of what they have seen you do in her life and with her life. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your name. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. You are welcome today. We commit you to God. We commit you to God's kingdom. We commit you to the angels of heaven that they will keep you, they will guide you in all the ways that you will go. And you will know God. The presence of God will follow you in all the days of your life. In Jesus' precious name. The way you are looking at me. Yeah? Can you imagine? Remember me, oh. <laughs> Father, we thank you for all that have come to rejoice with them today. He said, we rejoice with those that rejoice. Father, we bless them. Grant each and every one of them the longings of their hearts, the desires of their hearts. Make yourself real in their lives. Beautify their lives. Cause them to walk in the path of truth, in the path of integrity, in the path of righteousness, in the path of uprightness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I am a child of God, and therefore I am not a slave to sin, death, fear. The power of God flows through me. The grace of God works in me. The power of God helps me daily. As I go out, I walk in victory and I am established in Christ as an oak of righteousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.